Okay, question six. Uh, this is on page 39. It says, uh, and they give us uh, some traits here in that. So uh, traits of a house cat. So they're saying dominant traits. They're giving us actual the nomenclature. This is what nomenclature means. You're just going to put some notation to the actual allele. And uh, again, capital letter if it's dominant, small case if it's recessive. Okay, so it says dominant. Uh, here's one of the traits. Uh, either pointy ears or folded ears. So if it's pointed ears, uh, it has to have a capital P. Doesn't matter what the other allele is. That's going to be pointed. And if it's folded, two little P's. And I'm going to put a little hook on my little P's just so we uh, don't ever get them mix, mixed up with the, uh, with the dominant allele there. And that's folded. Okay, now let's take a look at this question. We can do the same for the other ones, right? They're smooth uh, hair or curly hair. And the other one is a condition called polydactyl. You're going to see this again when we look at pedigrees. Polydactyl is extra digits on the paws of the cat. So this is actually dominant. This is a, a, a situation or an example where the disorder is dominant to the recessive, normal. So if it's normal, it has five paws with a little d. But let's look at this first question here, number six. It says a folded eared female, okay, mates with a male who is unknown phenotype. So we don't know anything about this phenotype here. So let's put what we do know. If it's folded, must have a capital F, and we don't know what the, or capital F, capital, sorry, folded female. So she is going to have little p, little p, okay? We know that. And crossed with a male who's unknown. So we know nothing about this guy. So we're just going to put two lines to show that. Okay, so can we do a Punnett square? Of course, we can't in this case. Now, this is only a monohybrid. We want to slide monohybrids in there because, of course, when you do your exam, there's going to be monos and dihybrids all mixed in together and you have to be able to identify what type of question it is so you can utilize the best practices, right? In this case, that's all this is, is a mono a monohybrid, but we don't know the parent. So if we don't know the parent, right? Uh, in this case, we don't know the male, he's completely unknown, then uh, we can't do a Punnett square. So then we're gonna look at offspring. All six offspring have pointed ears, Okay, uh, and it's saying all of them have that. So indicate the most probable genotypes of the parents. Well, we know one parent, we know the female, because she's folded, she has to have little p, little p. But all of them, because all of the offspring were the dominant pointed, we can uh, guess the most likely probability of this parent is gonna be a capital B, capital P, okay? Now, we wouldn't have any other information. If they had, let's say, a seventh offspring and all of a sudden there were, let's say, some folded ear offspring, then we could go back there and change that. But at this point, that is our most likely probability with uh, these two parents. And you can actually test that. If you actually tested that, let's see if you would always get... Uh, uh, always get pointed. So capital P, little p, that's pointed. And you can see right now that that's of course what you're going to get. Everything would always be pointed. So that's why we come to that conclusion that that would be the most likely um, genotype of this unknown male. Okay, now if we take a look at the next question here, we'll try to do two videos in one here. Uh, let's go back and finish some of this legend here because now they're asking for other traits here. They're asking for uh, uh, the number of digits on their paws, but they're also talking about hair as well. So if we continue that legend, let's just do that really quickly here. So this is pointed. Uh, the two little P's is folded. And if you just keep looking at this, smooth is capital S, doesn't matter what the other allele is. That's going to be smooth hair. And if it's curly, they have to have two little S's. Okay, so that's curly. Now, polydactyl, they're uh, talking about this as well. Polydactyl, if it's a capital D, doesn't matter what the other one is. This is going to be poly. Let's just abbreviate that. And to just have normal five paws uh, or digits on their paws, it's going to be little d's. So again, that's recessive. So that's going to be normal or just five digits, right? 
So let's go through this question now. So this question is a little bit different here now. So it's looking at multiple traits that so we have dye hybrids here. So it says a curly haired five digit male. Okay, so underline the parent. If he's curly hair, he must have little less, little less. And if he has five digits, right, he must have uh, five digits, little d, little d. Okay, so that's one of the parents. He crosses that, or they cross with a female who is heterozygous for both hair type and number of digits on their paws. So that means this individual, I'll just put him on the side here. Uh, if he's going to be heterozygous for hair, he has to have a capital S and a little s. If he's going to be heterozygous for the poly, he's going to have a capital D, little d. Heterozygous for both those traits. Okay, now, what is the probability? Okay, so the probability of them uh, producing an offspring with curly hair and polydactyl for their digits. So probably a little unfair giving you this question. I'm gonna show you a better way to do this question and it's gonna lead up to the next concept that's coming up uh, in, our, uh, in our student package. When you have this, now this is a dye hybrid. It has two different traits, both the hair and uh, the number of digits on its paws. So those are two traits. When you're doing probability with a dye hybrid, this is the best thing to do. So the best way to do these questions, and this is a shortcut, is to break the dye hybrid into two monohybrids, isolating those traits. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to put the trait for hair over here. Okay. And we're going to look at the hair genotype of one of the parents, little less, little less. And we're going to just make a little mono hybrid like that. And we're going to isolate that one into our Punnett square. Then we're going to take the other parents genotype for the hair and we're going to put that down the side. So I won't draw arrows because that's going to get really messy, but big S, little s. And when we fill this in, and that's what we're going to do now, big S, little s, big S, little s, little s, little s, little s, little s. We can see that we're going to get one half of these are going to be smooth. And one half of these are going to be curly. Okay. Now you can do it the other way, but trust me, this is the best way to do probability questions with dye hybrids. Now let's isolate the other trait that we're talking about, digits, how many digits they have. And we're going to do a quick little mono hybrid with again, those two parents. Let me just maybe change pen color here. And we'll isolate those guys. So we're going to take this one here, put him down the top, little d, little d, and then take the other genotype for digits and put him down the side. And you can see this is much better than doing all that foiling and all of the filling in of the Punnett squares and stuff like that, and then counting them all up. Much easier to count up when they're in monohybrids. So big D, little d, big D, little d, little d, little d, little d, little d. And you can see it's going to be a one half as well. One half of these are going to be poly, and one half of these are going to be normal, which is just five digits. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring these together to do what's called the product rule. We've talked about it with monohybrids before, but we're going to do the product rule. So it says here, what is the probability of mating these two parents and having an offspring that is curly? Well, now we've already determined what that is. We said that it's one half chance of having an offspring that is curly. But we're going to bring that together in the product rule and multiply that fraction with the probability of that offspring being polydactyl. And again, we've already determined that with our monohybrid, one half for that. 
So the product rule is bringing those two probabilities for the different traits together, and we're going to multiply them as a fraction. So when you're multiplying fraction, you multiply the numerators, 1 times 1 is 1, and then you multiply the denominators, 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, so we have what's called a 1 fourth chance, but they wanted our answer in two decimal places. Okay, so two decimal places. And because of that, we're just going to divide the numerator by the denominator. 1 divided by 4 gives us 0 0.25 chance of having an offspring that is curly and poly. And that is our answer. Okay, and that's going to set us up into the next concept in our student package. But again, just to reiterate, best practices when you're doing a die hybrid and it is a probability question where you're going to use the product rule, break that die hybrid and isolate those into two mono hybrids, isolating the different traits between the two parents. Best practices. Okay, any questions, give me an email. Thanks, guys.